Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to another episode of Repop With Me. Now this one's a little bit different. Essentially, I was feeling really inspired today and I was feeling really inspired to cut these guys up. So you may remember either a week back, two weeks back, I don't know what it was. I don't know what order these videos are coming out in, but you might remember a couple of weeks ago that I did a video about rare plants and now garden centers and some stuff that's kind of holding their value. One of the things holding its value in garden centers was the philodendron florida ghost, which is basically this horrific amalgamation right here. So I knew I had some. These are probably, probably a lot of the ghosts from that dark time in 2020. Do you remember that box that went missing for about, I don't know, three, four months or something like that? And like a few of them were alive. This might be them. This might be something else. I'm not entirely sure exactly where these are from. However, recently, I don't know if you can tell by the way these have grown. They've, these have grown kind of down over and they'd be growing under the shelf where the lighting is. So the ends of these are actually looking really quite beautiful. This is exactly what you want to see in a Florida ghost, by the way, if you don't know. Beautiful white leaves and beautiful pink petioles. Now then, this Florida ghost, just to let you know, quick PSA, this one here is not as white. It is exactly the same as this one here that is white. I did a video, I do believe also it was in 2020, basically talking about the difference between Philodendron Florida ghost mint and Philodendron Florida Ghost. Spoiler alert, there's no difference. I do have a full video on it, so I will link that down below for you if you're interested. You can always pause and come back if you want to know more about this plant. Generally speaking though, this plant, full disclosure, is available in garden centers. However, it has kept its value. So maybe a plant, I don't know, this tall maybe, but more bushy. It can be anywhere between like 50 UK pounds, maybe upwards. You can get really big ones for nearly 150 pounds. So they've kind of held their value. I don't really know what the purpose is to propagating these. I don't necessarily think they're going to fetch a big book selling or anything like that. It's just, I was genuinely, genuinely inspired by the video I did and I really wanted a lot of nice ghosts, and if I don't sell them, then I'm going to make them for myself. So that's what we're doing today. Now, I tried to fetch a lot of the ghosts that I found in the shop. It's not all of them. I can see it's not all of them. I can see one up there that's climbing up the wall. It's all green, funny enough, but there are one or two around still, but these are the main ones I'm going to fetch. Obviously, at some point, I don't know what's happened with these. I've obviously put these in to just completely give up on, and one of them at least got strong. So what I want to do is I just want to go through them, cut them up, separate them out. I will either put them up in this video or another video. I haven't really decided. Let's just see where the conversation takes us because as usual, I do have your questions and we'll just get on with it really. Obviously, I'm most excited about propagating this. If you want to know how to get these super white, by the way, the answer is also in that video that discusses the difference between the two the two types. There is not two types. There are not two types. Also, I realize I look a certain way today. Um, I'm really proud of the t-shirt. You don't know. Everending Story, one of my top three favorite movies of all time. I thought it was the first, but it's not. I've decided a different movie is. And also the hair is, uh, it's not even brushed today. It's not even brushed today. So if you're enjoying it, that might be why. Let's crack on. I don't know the best way of doing this. I still feel like I need a bucket to get out the old lecker. So I'm going to grab one of those really quickly. There we go, one bucket, just to put it down here so I can basically unpot these plants and start snipping away at them. I don't know the quality of roots we're going to get, okay, because these roots on the end, they're nice, they're young, they're full of life, they've got lots of opportunities, you know what I mean? No wrinkles yet, no nothing, it's all good, but these ones back here are a little bit cooked, so I'm still going to propagate them down because at the end of the day, as lovely as this is, this, sorry, these are two vines. Give me one moment. Ew, ew, ew. Here we go. Here's one vine. As lovely as this vine is, because it is very cool, it's, it's not, it's not what I want. And I know a lot of you might be like, oh, you could just group them both together and put them up a, a pole. Nah, I want better. I want better than this. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to depot them here. Oh, is that snapped? Yes. A little bit of snappage. I'm going to depot them get them on the table, start cutting, but I might just do it once, one at a time so that you can actually see what I'm doing because I appreciate this is literally just, it's just an amalgamation. Let's pick him up with his lovely big long roots. Look at him, he's so cute. He's so cute, look. And then we'll put him down over here. And I'll get a question while we do this one. Right, we'll start off very quickly. And I know it bores a lot of you, but we're gonna do it anyway. So the first thing I wanna talk about, one moment. Right, you'd really expect more roots than that, wouldn't you? Like, you would really expect a lot more. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about today 
is the Invisalign update. Because people ask me all the time, I totally appreciate that. And you're probably thinking, okay, you've been on Invisalign for what? Is it over two years now? Is it two and a half years? Or is it just two? Uh, I feel like we're maybe just over two. It feels like so much longer, I can't even tell you. So basically, I'm still on Invisalign. Uh, slight Invisalign rant, nothing major, but I, <laughs> I finished my last, what I thought my last lot of trays in, I think it was literally the end of December. So in New Year, basically I changed to like my last tray and you have to leave it a little while. So you sort of leave your last tray in three weeks just to sort of cement the teeth a little bit more so they don't move. So I did that and then I went to my dentist to have a checkup. We decided, hey, these aren't really where we'd like them. Let's do something about that. There's still some things that we're not happy with, so let's just move them. Because personally, I actually think they've got worse. That will explain why they've got worse, but I think they've got worse. Essentially, oh, that looks so cute. You can't see this, but it's literally like half, almost looks variegated. Why does that look variegated? I don't think I've ever seen that on a ghost. Sorry, guys, I do actually want to hold this up because it's really interesting. It's not something I've ever really noticed before. No, I have to show you this, honestly. This is really wicked. Hopefully you'll see this. You see this down the stem? See this? How weird is that? And then there as well. Sorry, I know it doesn't want to focus. I realise we're all absolutely enthralled in my really boring Invisalign story, but look at that. Isn't that weird? That's the leaves. There's nothing... Sorry, they, they literally are growing upside down. It's really hard to turn them for you. That's really interesting. I can't say I've ever noticed that in a ghost. We will have a look at the others as we go because I haven't looked at the other long one either up close. So we will have a look at that. So anyway, had a rescan. That normally means that you come back about two weeks later and your new trays are ready. And if you need more attachments, fine. If you need to do other stuff, fine. To cut a long story very short, they decided, hang on, which way should we cut from? Let's cut from top down. I'm not going to cut the head, the very head because it's going to fail because the leaf isn't out and it's too young. Just trust me. I just know this is going to fail. So we're just going to cut from here. I'm not going to leave too much gap um, just for safety and for rot reasons. So I'm going to literally cut it in the middle of those two nodes there. Just so you know, because I do get some questions on propagating things. So if it's me just taking a gangly looking vine, I'm going to cut right here in the middle of these two nodes and I probably won't even trim it. I'll just leave it be for now because it might just help it be a bit more stable in the pot. And if there's any rot that develops, I've got a little bit of scope to just trim that. Not that rot's going to develop with these, to be honest. They tend to callous off and go really woody very quickly. So anyway, so we did a scan and it was time to come back. But I'd waited ages and it went way beyond two weeks. It went like three or four weeks and I had to ring up and I was like, yo, what's going on? They know me back by now. And I did think with it being New Year, I thought perhaps loads of people have gone and decided to have Invisalign or something. So there was like a big queue for people to get trays back because, you know, people do things like that in New Year. So I thought, oh, maybe it's that. It wasn't that. They had to call me back and they basically said, yo, they're in now. They've shipped. They've shipped on like 22nd of whatever. I can't remember now. Um, I'll make you an appointment for next week and then they'll definitely be here and then we can get you sorted out. I was like, right, okay, fine. I rock up the next week on my appointment that I've waited extra, extra time for now. And I get there. I get into the dentist's office because I've changed dentists, not for any reason, just my old dentist left. And I sit down and the guy's like, have you got your trays? I was like, what? No, you have them. You have them. And he was like, no, we don't have them. They were sent to you. I was like, no, 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 no. So they didn't have my Invisalign trays because the receptionist for some reason decided to send them out to my home address, which is not my home address anymore because it hadn't been changed. The reason it hadn't been changed the dentist is because nothing's ever been sent to my home address. Therefore, I didn't think to change it. It wasn't, you know, on the top of my mind. So I went all that way and the dentist said, look, the way that the previous dentist has done things, and I will come up to the camera. Sorry if this is like a little bit too close for you, but I can only really go so far away. So you're about to see my face way closer than what I'm comfortable with. So please just bear that in mind. But here, okay. So the previous dentist has decided to line them up. So the bottom teeth are in line. Okay. So alignment via the bottom of the teeth. The new dentist has decided since he had to do something right, because I've come there, I have no trays. I'm there for nothing. I've traveled an hour to get there. I've waited an extra three weeks to get there. I'm a little bit pissed off. Okay. You feel me? So he's like, oh, well, let's just have another look at you and let's see what we're doing. Let's have a thorough exam or whatever. Bless him. He probably felt really bad. So he decided that the best way long term for my teeth, if I wanted cosmetics, was to actually line them via the gum. So whereas the old dentist lined them up like 
you know, via the bottom. So the bottom was all nice and straight. That left the gums a little bit uneven, you could say. The new dentist would like to align the gums so the gum is all even. It's really hard to explain, but previously we were trying to take this tooth down because it's quite high up. The new dentist is saying, no, 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 well, let's push all of these up. Because he said, basically, <laughs> I felt so bad. He came and he was like, I assume you're not very happy with your gummy smile. And I, I know I have a gummy smile. Literally, I have thin lips, gummy smile. This is not ideal. He was like, I assume you're really unhappy with your gummy smile. And I was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, would you like us to push the teeth up? Because in the long term, when I smile, it will not be as bad. It's already not as bad, by the way, because I've actually had Botox here just above my lip and it actually relaxes my lip a bit. It's called a lip flip. Um, no filler, just literally relaxes the muscle a little bit. So if occasionally my lips look a little bit thicker, that's probably why. But it doesn't do much. It just means when I smile, instead of it going like, like that, it now, it just drops a little bit. Barely noticeable. So that's what we're doing anyway. We're now pushing the teeth all up. Now, the only problem that I have with this, apart from the fact, and I have so many nuggets in my mouth, I may as well be wearing an actual brace. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but they are literally everywhere and on the bottom. All the way around, right? What's the point, literally? I don't care, I'm in it for the long haul. So the only issue I have is when they align this, this tooth here is going to look a lot longer than this tooth here, just due to the fact that they were uneven and I've had a lot of wear. Okay, I'm actually gonna move back now because I'm doing the splits and it's not very nice. So due to that reason, I'm sorry, I realized that was way too close for you all, but due to the reason that it's been uneven wear and tear, I do have one tooth technically shorter than the other, but you never would have known before because they're all, you know, they wore the way they wore and then they got lined up to the bottom. So I kind of get it. That's probably better in the long run. If I wasn't having cosmetic dental afterwards, it probably would not be better to do that and it'd be better to just line them up at the bottom, right? So I guess it just depends. So we did that, we had a scan and once again, nothing happened, nothing happened. I only got this tray on, let me think, we're now on Tuesday. I got it last Friday, guys. I should have had it weeks ago. So again, they came in. I didn't get rang. I didn't get rang. No one told me. I had to ring up twice and find out where they were. So I had to go and pick them up because I didn't dare have them shipped. I thought, oh my God, I cannot have these going wrong. I'm basically going on holiday next week for two weeks. So I didn't really want to have the old trays in because the old trays, by the way, at this point, Invisalign trays don't last that long, guys and they were nasty. My teeth have gradually on videos been getting yellower and yellower and yellower. It's not my teeth, it's the staining on the trays that I can't get rid of. So I'm really happy to have a beautiful new tray with no staining on it. So that's great, that's the Invisalign update. I realize that might be semi-bored for some of you, but I'm sure you will live with yourselves, honestly. So that's that basically. Um, I have 16 trays, so I think that makes me done. I can't remember when, maybe it was either June or July. You do the math, probably July. And then I don't know what I'm going to do <laughs> because I cannot afford cosmetics right now at all. Like literally, I'm really, as we say in the UK, I'm very skint. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing about that. What I don't want to have to do, quite honestly, is have one tooth longer than the other for like a year until I can fix it. So I'll see what I can do there. But I'm just kind of, I just kind of want it done now. I want it done, but at the same time, because I can't afford it to be done and I can't afford the cosmetics at the other end of it, I also don't want it to be done. So these delays haven't been the worst. So I'm not even fully complaining about the delays. It's more the service than the delay. So, mm, I don't know. This is so, I think it's all the sap. It is, it's all the sap coming out of the petioles. It's going everywhere. These look like they'll propagate quite well, actually. So I'm quite happy about that. Let's just chuck the stems on the ground. So that's that update, basically. I'm still on it. If there's ever a point, because I know I get judged pretty heavily on here. Fair enough. I'm on a TV screen most of the time. If you've ever felt that my teeth are, like they were straighter and now they're not, that's actually why. You're not going crazy. You're not going crazy. They've completely changed how they're going to align them. And also, because I have more nuggets, they now, if I turn to the side or if I turn the wrong way, they look even more out of line because some of them have nuggets and some of them don't. <sighs> Do I still recommend Invisalign though? Because I'm sure somebody would like to ask that. Literally, still one of the best things I've ever done. Still prefer it to a brace, to be honest. Um, yeah, it does take longer, but you don't notice them and it's less painful. So it's whatever you want to do. But do not shy away from a brace if you want, you know, if you want your teeth done, you think, oh my God, I must pay for Invisalign because it is more expensive. Just get a brace, literally. 
Do whatever your orthodontist can't speak today. Do whatever your orthodontist recommends. Honestly, do not feel pressured into doing it this, you know, the Invisalign way when you don't need to. Right, so we're just going to keep snippity snip snipping. I'll get another question for y'all. Sorry, that ended up being way longer than I meant it to be, but I felt like I had to explain what was going on because I don't talk about Invisalign that often, to be honest. I feel like it's once every, like, six months, so there's your update. Let's get another... Ooh, another question. Ooh, okay. Right, the house. Do you have any idea how many people asked me about the house? So many people have asked me about my house. So the questions took uh, different avenues, different forms, whatever you want to say. And some people were saying, you know, how is the house coming along, like decor and stuff like that. So that's one question. Another question was, how are the plants coming on? Like, have you put plants in it? Like, what's going on? Um, and the third question was, when are we going to see it? So let's tackle them. First question, how is the house, decor, etc.? Honestly, guys, if I were to show you my house inside, you'd actually be very shocked, but I'm happy to describe it to you. So, my living room, okay, you walk through the door, you've got my living room. My living room has a sofa, two chairs, and a TV stand and a TV. That is it. No coffee table, no rug on the floor, no nothing. That is it. That is it. I have a bedside table next to my TV to use for a, like a low light lamp. That's my living room. You have the toilet, which has nothing in it. It's toilet. And you go through the kitchen and I have a table in there now that, oh my God, I had it like 10 years ago when I used to rent flats. Um, my dad gave me it back so that I could use it for a table, a makeshift table. So I have a little four seater table and chairs in the corner. Um, that's it in the kitchen. There is nothing else in the kitchen other than obviously the kitchen itself. Great. You go upstairs and you have my bedroom, which has an Ikea, what do you call it? Oh my God, what do you call it? The, the PAX wardrobe system, but it's only like a group of two. So you have that fitted, the same as the other bedroom, because they're kind of twins really, and a bed in it, in each, double bed, or king in each. That's it. There's nothing else in there. And the third bedroom, which is the bit that I want to talk to you about, is, it's tiny, it's like a little single box room almost, but that is going to be a office slash filming studio slash whatever. So... At the moment, it just has a dressing table in it and it has a couple of boxes in it and that's it. So honestly, what I'm getting at here is my house is literally empty, guys. It's literally empty. G genuinely, honestly, I just haven't had any money to, to do anything to the house. Like it took me a lot to get the house. Again, I won't bore you all with the whole, I'm not a millionaire conversation. Do you know what I mean? It took me a lot to get the house. I'm very thankful for the house. And I knew when I got the house that the house is basically all I would get, if that makes sense. So I'm literally just living in it like that. It's a little bit like those memes you see online. It's usually to do with guys, I don't know why, where there's there's like a picture of like a TV and like a camping chair or something and in like an empty room. And it's like, it says something along the lines of like, women will never understand how little it takes us to be happy or something like that. I don't know. But that's kind of my life at the minute. So that's genuinely what my house looks like, guys. That's the only real reason you haven't had a tour or anything like that. I think you'd be bored to death because there's nothing there. And that's just how it is. I'm not like ashamed of it or anything like that. It's genuinely just, I don't want to bore you with it. I would film in there, but there's no plants in there yet, save for one spathophyllum that I think is on my Instagram. So that's only what that high. It's the same as one of these back here. If I just walk back, it's exactly the same as one of these. Not very big at all. Each leaf's maybe the palm of my hand. So I have one of those in there just to see how it goes. And I still have not decided what plants I'm putting in there. Still, it's actually ridiculous. I really want to put one of a, a big, large form monster in there, but I'm just concerned it's going to kill the walls a little bit. I don't want to do about it. So I haven't actually decided what on earth I'm doing, basically. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to pull this cutting out of here because it's stuck. So that's that. There is absolutely a plan to put plants in it. It's just ugh, things have just they just haven't gone very smoothly for me. So I am working on it. Will the house be decorated at some point? No, probably not. Like, it's been painted a little bit, but it's off-white, so you wouldn't even know it had been painted, really, if you don't have, like, a trained eye, so to speak. Upstairs, in my bedrooms, it hasn't been painted at all. I have the paint. I haven't painted it yet. I still have swatches on the wall of where I was sampling paint, and I'm living like that. But you know what it is? We should normalise that sort of stuff. We should absolutely normalise that sort of stuff. Loads of people live like that. Literally, so many people 
buy a house or they rent or whatever. And it takes them months to get on their feet. Do you know what I mean? Some people have to wait like six months to get like a couch or maybe even longer than that. Do you know what I mean? They have to wait ages and they're sat on camping chairs or bean bags or whatever. We've all been there. Like I don't, I, I don't like the culture and it is kind of YouTube's fault. Don't get me wrong. Cause people think that people are something that they're not sometimes, but we really need to normalize taking a while to get on your feet and prioritizing other things. At the moment, I can't afford to do my house up. I can't afford to do my house up. That's fine. So I'm prioritizing just trying to be happy, trying to be genuinely fit and healthy. I've actually put more of a priority on that because if I'm not fit and healthy, I can't do anything. Do you know what I mean? The second priority, and we'll get to that now, is the studio, office, whatever you want to call it, upstairs, right? So that's going to be really fun. This is not going to live. This is not going to live. There is like no aerial. I should separate these into like will live, won't live. Let's do that just really quickly. So the other thing I want to talk about is my little studio. I am planning, will that live? Maybe. I am planning to have a little filming room. Now that kind of filming room is for a certain type of video. So that kind of filming room will be for stuff on my second channel. Like if I want to do makeup or skincare or whatever, it'll be that kind of setup or anything with a green screen. Cause I do occasionally whop that out. I can't at the moment it's packed down. So anything with that would be filmed there. Or if I'm doing any live streaming as in like games, stuff like that in my spare time. So that's going to be, that's what the room is for also as well to edit and to work and stuff like that. So that is in the works. Any money I have spare is actually going into that so that I can work better and work more efficiently. So I can work and pay my bills and maybe do my house up eventually. So that's my plan anyway. That is what I'm actually up to. I'm really hoping, as I say, I'm going on holiday for two weeks as of Monday. So just under a week, I'm going away for two weeks. And when I get back, I'm really hoping that my dad will help me sort that out because I bought myself a desk really good. Um, I did spend a bit of money on the desk, but I was actually thinking of my health a little bit there. And I will show you like a full tour of my office when it's done, because I feel like that would interest people, strangely enough, even though it's not plenty. Ooh, should we just keep that like that? Mm, no, we're not going to keep that like that because I feel like it's just going to look ugly. I've brought a really good desk that did cost me a bit of money, actually, and it's from a company called FlexiSpot. Essentially, all you need to know is it's a standing desk. So I'm going to have a standing desk. So if I need to, I can stand and edit or film even or do whatever just from my back and stuff. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. Hello. Thank you. Uh, no, we do not need this kind of noise level in our lives. Thank you very much. I've got that so I can do that and hopefully just be more comfortable. I did invest a bit of money in that. I think it would cost about 400 and odd pounds or something. So it's maybe like close to $500 literally but that should last me ages. It should be heavy enough to basically strap my PC tower underneath it and just everything would be all neat and nice and it'll just go up and down and everything will be great. My mic could be on there. Like I'd love to do podcasts at some point. I'm probably going to do the room out so that it can handle a podcast quite nicely in terms of like sound and stuff. So I have loads of plans. It's just really been quite slow to do, which is a shame, but hey, guys, it's life. It's life. Not everyone has money coming out of their ears. Do you know what I mean? Right, let's get this other long vine. And I want to check this little stem. See, this one doesn't have it. This one doesn't have it. Why? So just to show you, if anyone was worried, they're like, oh, well, that's why yours have gone really white. It's because you have like variegation in your stem. No, it's not. It's literally not. These are just as white. These are exactly the same. And they do not have that. Literally, they do not have that one little bit. So... No idea why that is, but literally think nothing of it, guys. Don't be sat there going, oh, this is why mine isn't white. It's not. It's not that. It's not that. Literally. I, just to put my money where my mouth is so y'all really do know that, I'm going to show you. I'm going to have to cut it first. Hang on. You have two different plants. This is from one plant here. As you can see, if I just twizzle them, you can see the variegation. And this is the one with the apparent... Where is it? Oh, please work for me. Give me a moment. It's really hard to hold on to. And I've just snapped an aerial root. That really annoys me. See that there? That has a bit of variegation in air quotes. And this one kind of doesn't seem to. Yeah, they look the same color, literally. No difference. So please do not be worried about your ghosts. Honestly, just don't worry about it. Right, so we've got those there. Because even that there, I don't know how close you can get that to the camera, but even that there looks similar. So beautiful, love those. Obviously I'm the most excited for those props, not these ugly green ones, but we'll see. 
Right, let's get another capacitor on. Use my remote to stop and start. Yeah. That was like five whole seconds for me. Not for you though. Ooh, someone asked me if I plan on going back to IAS, so the International Air Ride Show. Yeah, totally, honestly. Again, same reason. Cash flow, really. Cash flow and time. I really would like to do it this year. Really would like to do it this year. I don't like to say to you guys, oh, I'm definitely coming or whatnot because I don't want people to get disappointed if I don't kind of thing. But I would really, really, really love to go. Is that broken? Maybe it's broken. Oh, these are so cute, by the way. These are so cute. I would really, really like to go. I've only been once. Anyone that's curious, wondering like, oh, has she gone? Have I missed her? Anything like that. Literally, I was only there once and I think it was 2019. I still had my job because I remember quitting when I came back because part of the reason I quit was just uh, weird. So I haven't been since then. Obviously, we've had the pandemic and then I think last year it was just, just wasn't going to happen. I had too much on. I was paying basically out of my butthole for all the solicitor stuff. Not that much has changed there, obviously, hence, you know, a little bit low on cash, but I would absolutely love, 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 love to come. But I don't know if you guys in the US know this, but to come to Miami is quite expensive. But yeah, I really do want to do it. Leave it with me. I will do my best to attend this year. You will know ahead of time if I'm coming or not. And if I say I'm coming, it means I've actually booked the flight. So do not worry. I'd rather do it that way and then I can't disappoint anybody. But the time I did go, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was an amazing atmosphere. I met loads of you. I really remember meeting loads of you. And that was really weird for me because I'd never done any of that before. It's actually the only time I've done that. I'm saying that. I've never, ever done that since. Never met a bunch of people that I didn't know in that setting. Like, not like a meet and greet, but you know what I mean? I've literally never done it apart from that time. So it would be very, very nice to see y'all again. Maybe some familiar faces, maybe some new faces. So I will let you know. But I absolutely do want to go, guys. It's purely cash flow. Cash flow and time, because it takes a lot to fly there. I think it's like seven or nine hours flight time. I can't remember. I think I did one flight and then I had to change. I can't remember where I changed, really sorry, um, for an hour and a bit and then did another three hours. It was quite a long flight, really. Oh, and it killed me as well. It killed me. The jet lag killed me. But would I do it again? Absolutely. I would love to do it again. So we shall see what happens. I've got two area routes that are just stuck together. There we go. I hope this works. You know, I haven't just, I hope I haven't just cut this up and just completely ruined it. Do you know what I mean? That, that would kind of suck. We don't want that. We really don't want that. So, oh, there we go. Got that. I should probably speed up because I feel like I'm going to have to do something with these. I would water prop them, but um, I just think I'll kill them. Do you know what I mean? I literally think I'll kill them. All right, that's that. See, they're getting a bit suspect now because these roots are quite woody. So this is what I thought would happen. Like these, literally, the ones that you want to work are going to work fine. But the other ones, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Because this is woody as well. It's just not ideal, is it? Right. Oh, don't. Oh, don't. Right. We need to unpot this. Don't know why I didn't do that first. Two minutes. Oh. Okay. You know what? Oh, okay. Right. Let me just digest what's just happened. I think I didn't rip that, pulling that out. I think that is part of this. That whole root system is part of this one little plant. Some Somehow, I don't... Yeah? I don't know. See, it gets to the point now where I'm cutting it. I'm probably going to lose these, to be honest. But it's fine because I've got so many props on the table. I don't know how far down you can see. Probably not far enough. But literally, I have all of this here. That's just the green. White, I've got some really pretty ones here. That's not all of them. It's all I can grab safely. So we should be fine. We should be fine. Ooh, little little bit of a ranty one. And I know you all know my opinion, but I'll repeat it anyway, because why not? It is a Tuesday. Someone asked me what you think of made up plant names. Now then, now then, now then. And you know what? This plant does actually tie into it a little bit. So the whole reason I had to make that video that I made that will be linked, blah, blah, blah. The whole reason I had to make the video on the flirt, the, fl the reason I had to make the video on the Philodendron Florida Ghost and the Philodendron Florida Ghost Mint is because of this very reason. Because the name Philodendron, I can't speak today, guys. <laughs> the name Philodendron Florida Ghost Mint is made up. It's from made up Stan. It doesn't exist. It's not a thing. It don't exist. We don't know her. We've never seen her. We didn't even go to high school with her, primary school, nursery, nothing. We don't know her. She ain't a thing. 
She might want to be a thing, she ain't a thing, okay? It's not a thing. The reason I absolutely loathe it, and I really do loathe it, and it's only for one reason, it's because people use it to trick people into buying more of the same plant to keep the plant relevant or to try and get some extra shelf life out of the plant. The only time it's not done for monetary gain is when it's done for some sort of self-promo purpose, like something on Instagram, like, look at me, I've got this thing that no one has, and it's from the valleys of somewhere else, and look at it, it's so rare. It's the only one in the world that does this, okay? I don't like that. Now, there is nothing wrong with saying, hey, look, look at this ghost. It has blue variegation. That's really weird. Look at this. Look at this. That's okay. Just don't name it. That's all I'm saying. Or if you do name it, you should say, I'm absolutely not naming this. I'm calling this for fun or something like that. Like, for example, I sell in my shop, right? This guy here. Don't know if you can see it. Let me move back. This beautiful boy here, right? Now, I sell him as Anthurium Mysterious Dark Boy, right? But when I, when you click on the listing for that, it will tell you what I think it is, and it's actually an unknown Anthurium, basically. We don't know what it is yet, okay? And I make that very, very clear. And I call it Mysterious Dark Boy. It, I'm kind of taking the mickey out of people that name things, things, right? And if I ever did name a plant, by the way, and you bet your left nut, if I ever create a hybrid or I do something like that, even if it's a totally valid hybrid, I'm still going to put boy in the name and I'm still going to take the mickey out of it, 100%. So anyway, that's, that's kind of by the by. But the main reason I don't like it is genuinely because people use it to exploit people's wallets and we are not here for that. Rare plants, yes, sometimes they cost a lot, sometimes they come down, blah, 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 but it doesn't matter it's still done really underhandedly. Now, occasionally there's people that don't know and they've bought, for example, the Florida Ghost Mint and that's really sad. I'm actually going to leave that. It looks pretty pathetic. Don't think we can really get much more out of that. Do you know what I mean? Occasionally we get that. Oh, we've got rot on here. Let's actually unpick the rot. It's not a good thing to do. It's it's not genuine. I don't, oh, I don't like people that aren't genuine at all. I just think it's just cruel to do that to people, especially in this day and age as well. Like, oh, here's a pink princess marble. Here's this, that, and the other. I'm trying to think of other ones. What are the other ones? I think people have tried to name um, variegated raffidophora tetrasperma things as well at points. What else have we had? We just had some stupid stuff. Now, the only thing I will say is I think sometimes it's valid. It really depends. It has to really present differently. I think I have, where is it? Let's have a look. You know what? It doesn't look that different. Literally. Right. This guy here, he's a bit of a mess, right? I'll bring it up to the camera just to prove my point. Okay. See this guy here? Can you see him? Uh, please focus. Cover me up. You see that there? You're looking at, apparently, a Monstera Thai constellation creme brulee, right? I will get even closer so you can see my point. Now, to me, to me, the only difference I really see with this and I could be wrong, right? So just take whatever I'm saying here with a pinch of salt. I could absolutely be wrong. The only difference I can mainly see at this point is it's a bit more variegated. Somebody told me that the variegation is supposed to be a bit more yellowy or whatever, and that's just how it's different. I think it's just a more variegated tie. Therefore, I don't really believe in calling it a creme brulee. Does that make any sense? Now, it's tough for me because if I were to sell that plant, what do I call it? Is creme brulee valid or not? And that's that's the thing. And I am genuinely saying this as someone out of the loop, guys. So if someone wants to come and go, no, 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 they're really different because of this and that and the other. And you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. You're absolutely welcome to do that. I'm telling you that I don't know much about that plant. It's probably why I haven't seen it on camera. I've had it three weeks plus maybe, and I don't know what to think of it. So I haven't really told you anything yet. Um, but it's just stuff like that. It's like, is that valid or not? Because all Thai are just a bit different. That's, if, if that's valid, then that's like saying, you know, a variegated Monstera Albo, well, that's a mint, but a variegated Monstera Albo, we can give that a new name because it's more variegated. And I don't, I don't think that's right because now you can take that and apply that to any plant, any plant at all, literally a fill down Florida beauty that I can see down there beside me. Now that can have a new name because it's more variegated. Do you know what I mean? It, Where's the line? Where is that line? Because people that don't know, 
We'll be like, oh, but I have a tie, but I need a tie creme brulee. And if people think that doesn't happen, you're wrong. This is why we had Philodendron Florida Ghost and Philodendron Florida Ghost Mint. It's because people didn't know. Because people were quite willing to pay for this and to pay for, let me grab one, this, because they thought that this could never be this. And these were different plants. I'm telling you now, I think, I'm pretty sure, sellers were charging more for the mint. Which, if anything, surely you charge more for the white one. I don't know. Literally. But, so for anyone that thinks it doesn't work that way, it, it absolutely will. And it, it will catch people out a lot. And I don't like doing that. And if I ever name something, even on my shop, it'll have a name, but the listing will be very straight and be like, look, we don't know what this is. We call it this. Do you know what I mean? This is not a thing. Like when I talked about Thai 1 and 2.0 the other week in one of, I think the video I did about um, the Alba versus the Thai in 2023, I literally said, Thai 1.0, I'm calling it that because of this. Please don't go calling it that. People will, people will. And it's just what I don't like about it. We have enough problems than that, literally. We have enough. We don't need to be worried about that as well. And it's happening. I'll tell you now it's happening. That's how people are trying to combat the whole TC thing, right? Because more and more plants are coming out in TC, the market's moving very quicker. Prices are generally lower than what they were because now the plants are TC'd, right? That's gonna happen. But I feel like what people are doing is they're going, no, 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 this one is different. Mm -mm. can't get this on TC because this is like this specific one. It's nearly always because it's variegated, by the way. Otherwise, you can't get away with it, can you? It has to be variegated. And not only that, but variegates are harder to produce via TC. It's not impossible, but a lot of the time it has to be done via brute force. So to conclude anyway, that's what I don't like about it. In a nutshell, it is just that. There's no other real reason. If you want to do it for clout and pretend you've got this rare thing that no one else has because it's got like a pink splodge instead of a white splodge or whatever. I don't know. You know, that's fine. You do that. It, I think it's when it comes to selling it. Um, but even then, yeah, it, it's just not something I like. It, it's hard to articulate other than I don't like it. I feel it's dishonest. And you really mostly see people doing it for two reasons. So one, you've got the internet clout. Two, you've got sellers. Internet clout, you could discuss all day whether that just leads to inevitably sellers copying anyway or just anything else. So that is my opinion. I will not bore you anymore with it. Right. So now we have a load of cuttings. I've still got chaos in this pot here. And I think I will sort through it. I think I'll pop them up off camera because we've been going quite a while. Um, but we'll, let's just have a look at this. This looks nice, but I think the rest really don't. So we'll just see what's going on with them. Hang on. Oh, you know what? I've gone to tip that out. We're absolutely not going to see what's going on with that. We're absolutely not going to see what's going on with that. Why? Because it's in Koya, guys. I didn't even know that it was in Koya. That is wild. But that is a shame because this guy looks really cute. But it is just him, to be fair. And he doesn't look that cute. We might have to leave him and just leave him in his various states of neglect. Because I don't know how many plants are around here, but let me tell you, they are, they are beat. They do not look so good. So we have this guy, which I will probably just have a little look at him. There's not much else to do with him, really, is there? Bless his little heart. Let's have a look, grab a question. I got a question that was basically, do you edit your own videos? And if so, what do you use? Um, I've always edited my own videos. It's really weird because sometimes people, like they have like a bone to pick with one of my videos and there's something like, oh my God, you need to get rid of your editor. And it's like, I'm, I'm literally the editor. <laughs> what makes you think I've got an editor? I would love an editor, by the way. I get so many more videos out a week. If you're ever wondering why I can only really do one a week, it's just due to the fact my workload and just the things I've got going on in life, it's nearly impossible to do more than one video a week. If I had an editor and I could afford one, I could probably bosh out two to three videos a week, maybe two, maybe, maybe three is a push, but I would love to do that. Um, I just can't because for the same reasons that we've talked about. So I would love an editor, but until such time, I do actually edit my own videos. And yeah, so the question was like, what software do you use? I used to use a program called Sony Vegas. It was very old. It had no uh, hardware acceleration at all. It was horrific. And it was generally quite slow. It liked to crash. Just not a good time, really. I switched to the Adobe sort of creative cloud suite. And I pay, I pay a hefty amount for that a month. Um, I think I pay 50 pounds a month to have the suite. But it's worth it, though. Um, and I use that to edit all my videos. But what I will say is that was a learning curve. Like I remember trying to switch from one to the other. I think I still had my job. It was it was rough because like the tiniest little thing took me five times as long to do. So whereas this video now, how long have we been going? Right, so been going about 45 minutes raw so far. 
it might, it has to at least take me 45 minutes to edit it. And that's assuming that I watch it and there's absolutely nothing to edit out at all. So the more that I have to edit, the longer it takes. And that's on a very straightforward video. That is rain or snow. And it's very dark in here. Um, a thing like a red plan index, that's like a couple of days to edit. Like it really depends on the video, but that's what I use. And I honestly do recommend it. You get a lot of good things in there. You get stuff to clean up your audio. You get Photoshop. If you're good with Adobe After Effects, you've got that. Um, I use Premiere Pro to edit all my videos and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's really handy to be honest. I even have um, Photoshop Express on my phone because when you get the Creative Suite, you can have it on your phone too. Um, and stuff like that. In terms of like, if you're wanting to do YouTube and you think, oh my God, that's a lot of money for software. Um, it is, and I wasn't always able to pay for that. So I've had to obviously do other things, but I'm sure there are good free versions out there and I'm sure other people can help you in the comments if that's what you're looking for when you've asked that question. Um, I don't really know what they are because I've, I've just always gone through Adobe because even before I switched to Premiere Pro, I was still using things like Photoshop. I've used them for years. So I'm not quite sure what you can get around for what. I'm sure there's loads of free software out there. Um, but yeah, that's what I use. And it did take a long time to learn to use it. Even the, like literally guys, the most basic stuff took me a while to use. So it's a learning curve. You get out what you put in. As with learning any skill, software, anything. So it is a bit difficult, but it's not once you know what you're doing, if you know what I mean. Just learn to do the basics, learn how to do a jump cut, learn how to change the color of something, learn how to zoom, um, learn how to crop things down, learn how to put a picture in, learn how to put something in without a background behind it. Very, very, very basic bread and butter stuff and you should be fine. So now we have a load, and I mean a load, we're gonna put, we're gonna forget we saw him. I feel kind of embarrassed about him. But we've got a load of propagations. I'm going to pot them up probably off camera just because I just think it's gonna be very noisy. I won't be able to talk much. It's not gonna be ideal, but how pretty are they? That's like the most beautiful bouquet you've ever seen. I would actually love to put them in water. They would look so cute in like a little jar, would they not? Oh, they're so cute. So I'm going to pot them up probably straight away and we will see how that goes. So thank you very much for watching today's video. I will update you on these little guys at some point. As I say, I will pot them up beautifully and hopefully we will get some good propagations. Definitely probably out of these less so some of these with like no root we will just see i might even clump them multiples the ones that i think are going to fail i'll just put them in multiple parts it'll be fine these will obviously grow they've got roots and we'll see how it goes some of these have root rot that i just i just haven't picked off and i will probably definitely have to do that before we plant anything but that is it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a comment on anything I've said. I hope all of the house stuff and everything like that makes sense to you. Um, I will get there eventually, just give me time. Thank you very much for watching this video today, guys. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, including that ghost video, if you haven't already seen it, then please feel free to subscribe. And that link will be in the description for you also. That's it for this week's video, guys. I will love you and leave you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.